Hi everyone, in this video we are going to discuss this example. We have to calculate the value of this integration with the help of Cauchy's residue theorem and they have given c is a curve mod z is equal to 2. So let me write the given integral is our i. We have what is the integral? Integration over c dz upon cos z. So the most important thing is curve c. So let me mention what is our curve where c is a circle actually it's a circle okay mod z is equal to 2. So what is standard equation of circle? The standard equation of circle is mod z minus z0 is equal to r r is radius of that circle and z0 is center of that circle. Get it? So here you can see z minus nothing is there that means center is 0. And if you compare right hand side the radius is 2. So let us write here center is 0 0 and radius is 2. Right? So let us draw one circle here with center 0 0 radius 2. This is real axis and this is imaginary axis. Okay. So let us take some scaling here. 1 2 1 2 minus 1 minus 2 minus 1 minus 2. Okay. I am drawing a circle with center 0 0 radius 2. Circle will be like this. So we got the circle with center 0, 0 and radius 2, 2 comma 0, right? 3 minus 3 will be like this. So uh, with the help of Cauchy's residue theorem, we have to find the value of this integration. So let us recall what is the statement of Cauchy's residue theorem and then we will start to solve. That theorem says integration over C f of z dz is equal to 2 pi i sum of residues. It means, first of all, we have to find singular points of fun given function f of z. Singular points, that means a point where function is not analytic. We have to check whether those points lie inside the circle or outside the circle. If points lie outside the circle, no need to worry. But if point lies inside a circle, we need to find residues of at those poles. We will take the sum of all these residues and we will multiply by 2 pi i. So we get the value of the integration. Okay, so this is Cauchy's residue theorem. So here also we have to find the singular points first, then we will find residues. We will multiply, we will take the sum of residues, we will multiply by 2 pi i and then you will get the answer. So let us do that. Okay, so we have this space, let us use. Just tell me what is our f of z here? Can you tell me what is our f of z? here the function. So here we are integrating this 1 upon cos z. So this is our function. Okay. So what is our f of z? 1 upon cos z. So now we have to find the singular points. Singular points that means a point where the function is not analytic or simply you can say where the denominator is 0. Okay. So let us write f is not analytic if z is equal to. Will you tell me for what values of z denominator will be 0? That means for what values of z cos will be 0? We know cos pi by 2 is 0. That means z is equal to pi by 2 is a singular point. So you can say f is not analytic at pi by 2. Similarly, cos minus pi by 2 that is also 0. So these are two singular points, but see we know for 3 pi by 2 cos is 0 minus 3 pi by 2 cos is 0, 5 pi by 2 cos is 0 minus 5 pi by 2 cos is 0. That means for all these points denominator will be 0 and function won't be analytic. So all these are singularities, okay, all these are singularities, but now our task is to find which singular points lie inside C and which singular points lie outside C. So we know that pi, pi, its value is 3.142, right, value of pi. So pi by 2 will be approximately 1.57 and so, okay, so on. So pi by 2 
that means 1.57 so it will be here pi by 2 minus pi by 2 will be it will have minus sign so it will be here somewhere minus 1.57 and so on 3 pi by 2 3 pi by 2 that means it will be 4.5 and so on i don't know the exactly but it will be 4 point something that means those will lie outside c get it so pi by 2 and minus pi by 2 will lie inside c and all remaining singular points will lie outside c so let me clearly mention so here here pi by 2 and minus pi by 2 lie inside c and all remaining singular points singular points lie outside c okay so our task is to find residue only at singular points which lie inside c now our task is to find residue at pi by 2 and minus pi by 2 so fortunately all these are simple poles so here let me clearly mention here z is equal to pi by 2 is a simple pole simple pole means pole of order 1 getting all these are simple poles so pi by 2 is also pole of order 1 we have to find the residue the definition of residue involves Lorentz series expansion but fortunately it is a pole so we have very simple formula to calculate pole simple pole okay residue at simple pole so let me mention residue of f of z at z is equal to pi by 2 so that formula says limit z tends to z naught z minus z naught f of z okay so if you have a pole of order 1 or simple pole we have this formula to calculate residue here z naught is pi by 2 so let me replace it by pi by 2 pi by 2 here also we replace it by pi by 2 right so actually there is no more space to write make a screenshot of it then we will go further so let us simplify it further so this is equal to limit z tends to pi by 2 z minus pi by 2 into what f of z but what is my f of z 1 upon cos z so simply i can write upon cos z since it is in denominator so maybe you are thinking it's very simple no just put z is equal to pi by 2 at numerator and denominator and we'll get the answer no if i put z is equal to pi by 2 pi by 2 minus pi by 2 0 and if i put pi by 2 here cos pi by 2 0 that means if you apply the limit we are getting 0 upon 0 form it is called it as indeterminate form so when you have indeterminate form we can apply l hospitals rule okay so l hospitals rule let us apply limit z tends to pi by 2 okay so what is l hospitals rule it says if you have 0 upon 0 form take the derivative of numerator at numerator and take the derivative of denominator at denominator what is the derivative of numerator only derivative of z is 1 pi by 2 its constant derivative will be 0 derivative of cos z minus sin z okay so i got by taking derivative i got this one okay so let me mention if you do haven't understood this one if you have 0 upon 0 form so 0 suppose you have f of z upon g, g of z then it is limit z tends to 0 f dash of z upon g dash of z that means take derivative of numerator and write it at numerator take derivative of denominator and write it at denominator this is l hospitals rule okay i am using this one let me remove this part and we should mention here by l hospitals rule okay by l hospitals rule by l hospitals rule we have got this one so now let us apply the limit so at a place of z i am going to put pi by 2 so minus sin pi by 2 so we know that sin pi by 2 is 1 so 1 upon minus 1 so the answer is minus 1 so our residue is minus 1 so we calculated residue at this simple pole pi by 2 so we have one more simple pole minus pi by 2 it also lies inside c so let us find residue at minus pi by 2 here 
z is equal to minus pi by 2 is also a simple pool that means same formula we have to use to calculate its residue so residue of f of z at z is equal to minus pi by 2 same formula huh? so the formula says limit z tends to minus pi by 2 here z minus minus pi by 2 minus minus plus pi by 2 f of z so now we have to put the value of f of z which is 1 upon cos z but see there is no more space to write make a screenshot of it then we will go further so let me write the value of f of z so this is equal to limit z tends to minus pi by 2 z plus pi by 2 f of z is 1 upon cos z we have z cos z here let us see what will happen if I apply the limit. If I put z is equal to minus pi by 2, minus pi by 2, pi by 2 will get cancel. That means we will get 0 at numerator. Cos minus pi by 2, that is also 0. So we get a 0 upon 0 form. Again, indeterminate form. So again, I will use Ale Hospital's rule. Okay, so let us use Ale Hospital's rule. So this is equal to limit z tends to minus pi by 2. That rule says take the derivative of numerator and write it at numerator. Derivative of numerator is derivative of z is 1, pi by 2 is constant, right? Yes, as it is. Uh, derivative will be 0. Derivative of denominator. What is derivative of cos z? Minus sin z. So let me mention by L hospital's rule. By L hospital's rule, okay? Let us apply the limit now. 1 upon minus sine minus pi by 2. At a place of z, I am putting minus pi by 2. In case of sine, minus sine comes outside. So minus will come outside minus minus plus sine pi by 2. We know that sine pi by 2 is 1. 1 upon 1 is 1. So the second residue is 1. The first residue was minus 1. So we got residue at both poles. So let us apply Cauchy's residue theorem. By Cauchy's residue theorem. That Cauchy's residue theorem says integration over C dz upon cos z is equal to 2 pi i sum of residues. So 2 pi i for the first residue minus 1, second plus 1, minus 1 plus 1, 0, 2 pi i into 0. So, 0 into anything, 0. So, the required answer or the required value of integral is 0. Example is over, make a screenshot of it, then we will stop. Thank you. See you in next video.